Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we talk about problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. My wife disappears for a week after a big fight, so I call to apologize, and my mom picks up and tells me that she locked her in the basement. I opted for an associate degree after high school, and that is where I got to meet this girl, who was everyone's crush. She was my class fellow, and to be honest, the hottest girl in the whole department. I was too shy to ask her out, so I decided to go slow and take my time, as I didn't want to rush things. We interacted a few times during class, but that was not enough to start a conversation. I had a crush on her and wanted to confess my feelings, but was not courageous enough to go on face to face, so I decided to add her on social media. I added her on social media and it took no time to start a conversation. We started talking randomly and clicked so well that she started hanging out with me in the college as well. We used to talk around the campus would take the classes together, and even spent time together after college. I was now courageous enough to ask her out, and she said she would love to date me. I was over the moon and knew that I was the luckiest guy, as almost every guy had tried to catch her attention, but she was now my girlfriend. Time flew, and we both graduated and got our associate degrees. As the college was well reputed, it didn't take long for me to land a job and start earning. She had moved in with me and everything was well. My girlfriend always had been a stubborn and spoiled kid, as she was her parents' only kid, so they had made sure that she was provided with everything she ever asked for. This made her self-centered and egocentric, as she would think that she was entitled to everything she had asked for and deserved to be provided with. I knew how she was, but never cared as I was head over heels in love with her. We decided to get married and wanted our families to get together. We arranged a dinner and invited both the families. As her family consisted of her parents only, my family consisted of my mom and a younger sister. We had a great time and everyone loved the dinner prepared by us. Families discussed themselves and that was what we wanted. My motive was to make them sit together and know each other well before we would make the decision that was going to be for a lifetime. I had always been a family-oriented person and was very concerned about what my family would think about the girl I had chosen. A week later, my mom called me and told me that she wanted to talk. I told her that I would see her on the weekend. I went to see my mom and found out that she wanted to talk about my marriage. She told me that she liked my girlfriend already and also liked her family, but she had a few concerns. I asked about them and she told me that as my girlfriend belonged to a rich family, she may face difficulty in adjusting to me. I told her that as she was already living with me, I didn't think it was difficult for her, and she told me that she felt that my girlfriend was a bit demanding and had high expectations which may affect our relationship later on. I tried to convince her that those were all just thoughts and there was no such thing, and left. I came back and discussed the whole conversation with her. I told her what my mom had said, and if things were like that, then she could reconsider. My girlfriend was furious and said that she wanted to talk to my mom immediately. She called her, even when I was trying to stop her, and told my mom to stay away from us. She said to my mom that she was not going to bear her interference between us, and it should be the last time that she had tried to interfere. She cut the call, and I told her that if she ever talked to my mom like that, we would break up then and there. A-I-T-A? My mom was very hurt, and I knew that she needed me. I went to her right away and apologized to her on my girlfriend's behalf. She told me that it was all right, and as this generation needed space and privacy, my girlfriend was right. I told her that she had misbehaved and would have to apologize, but my mom told me that it was all right, and she did not need to. I told her that I had already told my girlfriend that if she ever disrespected my mom again, I was going to dump her. My mom told me that I was stupid and asked me to take her to my apartment. My mom went there and told my girlfriend that she was just concerned as any mother would get. She also told her that she would never try to interfere in our matter. 
My girlfriend told me that she was already dating a guy who was not even close to her family standards and that that is why my mom should not doubt her commitment. My mom told her that she believed her and there was no chance that she was going to doubt her. My girlfriend's parents told us that they wanted to throw an engagement party and how could we refuse? My mom told me that she wanted her wedding ring to be a gift to my girlfriend. She also told me that I would not have to arrange for a ring. I was so glad and overwhelmed as my mom was being so thoughtful. Just a few days passed and my girlfriend asked if I had chosen a ring and if she could just see it. I told her that it was a surprise and she had to wait till the party. She was very stubborn and kept asking me to show her the ring so I decided to disclose the surprise. She was visibly not happy to see the ring. She looked at me in horror and told me that it was a very old-fashioned and cheap ring and there was no way that she was going to wear it. I told her that it was my mom's and how she had given it with love. She told me that it was not given out of love, but only to save a few bucks. She told me that we were going to buy a new one and there should be no arguments. I only worry about my mom and how she's going to feel. We had bought a new ring and her dad paid for it, which embarrassed me a lot. But what worried me more was my mom's reaction. As I had put that new ring in my fiancé's hand, my mom asked if my fiancé didn't like the ring, to which I told her that her ring was too precious and I wanted my mom to wear it. She knew I'd lied, but did not ask again about it. The wedding preparations began and my fiancé wanted a grand wedding, whereas I had very little savings. I told her about my budget and she told me that I didn't have to worry as her parents were going to arrange everything because she was their only child. I wasn't happy with the idea, but there was nothing else I could do. I loved her so much, but I thought I didn't deserve her as she was used to everything perfect and I was not able to afford anything perfect. Her dad arranged a lavish beach wedding and spent so much on the wedding. This made me feel like a loser. The wedding was beyond my imagination, but I was not able to enjoy it that much. We got married and started our life as a married couple, but now I grew more responsible than before as I felt like it was my responsibility to afford everything my wife would demand. I got hired for another job and would work at two places just to earn extra and kill my inferiority complex that was rooting. My wife wanted to go on a honeymoon abroad, but I could only afford a road trip at that time. I told her that I, as I was working harder now, I would save more and take her to wherever she would desire, but she wasn't ready to listen. She told me that she would ask her dad to arrange the trip, and I did not need to worry. I tried to make her understand how I felt whenever her dad would finance our demands. But she was too stubborn to listen. This broke a huge fight between us. And now she's gone to her parents' house. A-I-T-A? My wife, as usual, did not listen to me and not only asked her dad to arrange the trip but also told him about our fight. He called me and asked if he could see me. I went to his office and he, of course, tried to change my mind. He told me that I was like his son and that whatever he owned belonged to us, so there should be no issues in this matter. He also told me that I should give up on my jobs and join his office. I told him that I needed time to think and left. I went straight to my mom and told her about the whole scenario. She told me that if my self-respect didn't allow me, I should not go for the office job my father-in-law has put forward. I already knew that I was not going to take such a step. We went on the honeymoon arranged by my father-in-law and I enjoyed it as much as I had enjoyed my wedding. We came back and I told my wife that all I wanted was time to prove myself that I was able to provide her with whatever she would demand. She told me that I had to take it easy as she had no high expectations from me, which disheartened me even more. Just a few days passed and my wife was all set with new demand and this time she wanted a car. I told her that I would buy a car in installments but she said the car I could afford would not be up to her standards so I should let my father-in-law arrange it. I was done now. I told her that if she was interested in everything her dad owned she could simply go back to him. 
She asked me why could I not join my father-in-law's office, to which I replied that it was my decision and my mom supported me. She packed her stuff and left. She did not contact me for a whole week. I felt guilty and called her to apologize. But to my surprise, my mom picked up the call and asked me to see her immediately. I went there and came to know that she had been at my mom's place for the whole week, but asked my mom to keep it a secret. She had been in a bad temper and had ill-treated my mom. Just today, when my mom tried to call me, she locked her in the basement. My younger sister returned from her trip that day and unlocked her or she would have stayed there God knows for how long. My mom managed to pick up my call on her phone as she had gone to the washroom. I told my wife that our marriage had ended, and I was going to file for divorce. NTA, it was OP's life, but his wife could not stop directing him. She told his mom that she chose to live with him, then she should have adjusted to his lifestyle but she could not live without her daddy's money. It was she who had to reconsider her decision of marrying a man who could not afford her lavish lifestyle. But instead of using her brain, she chose to crush his self-respect and did not even care. She wanted what she wanted, and that was it. Her life revolved around her demands only. Why T.A.? I mean, how dumb is the O.P.? If my father-in-law was that rich and welcoming, I would not even work. The way OP's father-in-law assured him that he considered OP his son, if I was in OP's place, I would have just moved into his house. OP's ego was too big to handle, and he was caught by an inferiority complex. He wanted someone who was lower in standards than him, and would depend on him for her needs. OP was egocentric and thought about himself only. His wife was acting just like she was. Next story. I, a 26-year-old male, was back home for a few months almost two years ago. We hooked up for, I'd say, four months until I flew back out of state for work again. Her and I did see each other again just recently at this baby shower. I guess they became friends through this mom group. My friend has one other kid. And they became good friends, so that's why she was also invited. And... I was going to say hi when I saw her there, but she ignored me. Then that's when I noticed that she was there with her boyfriend and their baby, so I thought it, it was better to keep my distance. But she actually approached me like 10 minutes later by the bathroom in the house. She asked me if I could leave because she's with her boyfriend and it's just very awkward of both of us there at that party. But like I haven't even approached them at all, so why would it be awkward if we don't interact during the party? She wasn't letting it go. She actually told me, please, and it's complicated. I told her that if her boyfriend doesn't know we have a history, then he won't need to because I honestly don't care. All I'm doing is being here celebrating one of my close friend's days, so if she leaves me alone, I'll leave her alone. That didn't end up being the case. They left not even an hour later. I kept my word, though, about not going anywhere near them, but one of my friends told me that her boyfriend saw me, and for whatever reason, they started arguing. It wasn't subtle, either. They went to the front of the house, but you could still hear what sounded like them raising their voice at each other, and a few minutes later, I saw her walking to my friend, probably telling her bye but she definitely looked right at me after that, like she's super pissed. Everyone at the party was confused afterwards, so they were all talking about it for the rest of the time. For the first time in a long time, she texted me since I never changed my number, and she told me thanks for ruining a party when all of this could have been avoided. I asked her what could have been avoided, but again, she didn't tell me. She just thinks it's my fault for whatever shit went down. Then, after my friends found out that she asked me to leave, they think I'm T.A. for not doing that. The whole party was meant for my friend and it turned into some drama just because I wouldn't leave, even if it was for some unknown reason. I don't know what to think now. 
or why it was such a big deal that we were at the same party when neither of us even talked at all. AITA for being the cause of a scene because I denied her request? Ha <laughs> NTA, dude. Her boyfriend knew that she cheated, and she probably admitted it was you. Then he saw you there, and it stirred up shit. NTA, assuming there's no chance the baby's yours, it sounds like the boyfriend may be abusive, jealous and controlling, or that you were the side piece and didn't realize it. Next story. My ex-wife, 31, and I, 29, were separated for a year and a half. As I moved into my own apartment, we were no longer a couple. She wanted to reconcile, but that wasn't going to happen. The reason we didn't divorce right away was because it would have been too expensive plus a whole headache to deal with since she was very much against it. My girlfriend at the time was just a temp at my work, but we started seeing each other. We fell hard for each other and then nine months after we found out that she was pregnant and that's when I decided to go ahead and file for divorce to be completely cut off from her so I can focus on my family no matter how much it was going to cost. My ex started this whole campaign around that time. Since my girlfriend was pregnant, she created the narrative that I had an affair and left her for the other woman. My parents didn't believe me because obviously they already knew I was living on my own. My sister was the only one who believed her because they were also close friends. We literally met through my sister. She didn't believe me when I said it, then didn't believe my parents, thinking that they were just trying to cover for my mistake, to avoid being seen as the bad guy. This divided us a lot, even if before we weren't in contact. But she was convinced that I broke my ex's heart with my cheating. My sister called me a disgusting pig. On one occasion, when she met my girlfriend, who was around seven months pregnant at that time, called her a home wrecker and how she feels carrying a fair child. From there, we ceased all contact despite our parents trying to mediate. My son is two. Girlfriend and I are living together now. Divorce was finalized last year. Now she wants to meet her nephew and apologize. I was still firmly against that. My parents convinced me to at least have one phone conversation. So yeah, she's sorry for how she acted, but now it's the narrative that she doesn't blame my ex for her reaction and is still somewhat on her side because in the end, I'm the one who broke her heart and got someone else pregnant. But apparently is willing to put that aside for my son's sake so that they can meet. Oh man, that made me so mad. It turned into an argument instead. I hung up on her, so I'm still on my decision to not involve her at all. My parents are telling me to stop being selfish for my son and it's unfair to keep my sister from her nephew just for wanting to be a loyal friend to my ex. My sister is saying I'm being petty now. I really don't know what to think anymore. It's seriously driving me crazy. AITA? NTA. Further, I would have told your parents that their lack of support for me and my feelings and needs is going to cause me to reevaluate our relationship as well. No one is entitled to your child. NTA. She would definitely tell it to your kid when he's a few years older to make herself look righteous when the kid is ranting to her about how mean you are for whatever normal parent thing. And then you'd have to deal with the emotional damage to your kid and your relationship with him.